One of the most commonly misunderstood metrics for OLED monitors is Visa's Display HDR True Black certification, so let's clear things up. The new MSI MAG 272QP QD OLED X50 is among the first OLED monitors on the market to receive a Display HDR True Black 500 certification. At first glance, some users may assume this means the monitor is limited to an HDR peak brightness of 500 nits. That's not the case at all. Once we enable the peak 1000 nits mode on the MSI 272QP, HDR peak brightness measured over 1000 nits on a 3% window or smaller. For OLED panels, the limiting factor when it comes to display HDR certification isn't peak brightness in small highlights, it's full screen brightness. In fact, to achieve True Black 500 certification, a monitor must reach a full screen luminance of at least 300 nits, which the MSI 272QP managed to do making it the brightest OLED monitor we've tested to date in terms of full field brightness. The 2025 iteration of the third generation QD OLED panel used here is clearly a step up, delivering not only stronger HDR impact, but also better visibility in bright rooms, outshining all prior QD OLED monitors certified under True Black 400. Now, one well-known quirk of QD OLED monitors so far is the trade-off between using the Display HDR True Black mode, which yields higher average picture level or APL, but clips bright highlight detail, and opting for the 1000 nit mode, which preserves specular highlights at the expense of overall image brightness. To address this, MSI has developed an EOTF boost function which is available on the MAG272QP at launch. However, after extensive testing, we identified several issues with this setting. Firstly, it can cause even more aggressive highlight clipping in certain high nit content than the Display HDR True Black 500 mode alone. Secondly, the manipulated EOTF curve introduces a noticeable kink, which in turn can cause posterization, something we observed in the skies of the Martian 4K Blu-ray. And thirdly, we noticed luminance fluctuations during some transitions from bright to dark scenes, which could prove distracting. All things considered, Display HDR True Black 500 remains the most stable and accurate option. A permanent fix will ultimately need to come from Samsung Display, the QD OLED panel supplier responsible for the screen's power and brightness management. Despite shipping with a factory calibration report, SDR color accuracy on our MSI 272QP X50 review sample was only so-so. Most of the SDR picture presets on this monitor are mapped to the QD OLED panel's naturally white color gamut, with no available options to manually adjust or constrain the color space. The only exception is the sRGB preset found under the Pro Mode submenu, which tracks the sRGB slash Rec. 709 gamut making it the most suitable for consuming SDR content. That said, color temperature adjustments are locked out in sRGB mode, meaning that you are limited to the factory calibration, and on our review unit, there's excess red in the RGB balance measurements, causing SDR videos to take on a slight red cast, although overall, Average delta errors still measured below the humanly perceptible threshold of delta error 3 on this color checker SG chart where 140 patches were measured. Interestingly, in SDR sRGB mode, the default brightness setting of 70 yielded a peak white measurement of nearly 280 nits, so you may want to lower the brightness value for a more comfortable viewing experience in a light control room. There remain no gamma control in the picture menu. So if you'd like flat 2.4 gamma to attain deeper blacks and greater image depth for Rec. 709 SDR viewing in a dimly lit room, you will need to rely on ICC profiling rather than just simply changing a menu setting. DCI-P3 color gamut coverage measured 99.5% in UV terms, whereas Rec. 2020 coverage was 83%, with the underlying spectral power distribution showing beautifully distinct red green and blue peaks indicative of quantum dot technology, allowing for higher color luminance and hence more impactful rendition of brightly saturated colors. Being a monitor, 
Naturally, 444 Chroma was fully reproduced without any problem. The MSI 272QPX50 exhibited excellent bright uniformity typical of QD OLED, manifesting no dirty screen effect, bending or color tinting even off axis. Dark uniformity on our review unit wasn't too bad either, with only some very mild thin vertical streaks and side vignetting visible on full field grey slides just above black. Using a Leo Bodnar tester, input lag measured 10 milliseconds at 60 frames per second, halving to 5 milliseconds at 120 fps, then further halving to 2.5 milliseconds at 240 fps. Of course, 240 fps is the highest refresh rate the Leo Bodnar tester is capable of, so to measure latency at 500 fps, we have to use an Nvidia LDAT device which takes into account the mouse click. CPU processing, operating system, game application, GPU rendering, and finally the display. At 500 FPS, end-to-end -end system latency measured 8.5 milliseconds across 100 runs, which is the lowest we've recorded so far, paving the way for amazingly responsive gameplay. In addition to reducing input lag, the combination of 500 fps video signal paired with 500 Hz screen refresh rate also resulted in very high motion clarity free of black smearing artifacts, courtesy of OLED's near instantaneous pixel response time. The MSI 272QP also offers a black frame insertion or BFI function, accessible via the MPRT setting, provided the source frame rate is 240 fps or higher. This feature inserts a black frame in between every other frame to improve perceived motion clarity, though it also reduces the brightness by half. As such, it's not suitable for HDR content, since the HDR10 tone curve would significantly undertrack the ST2084 PQ standard. It's also worth noting that enabling MPRT will never surpass the motion clarity of a true 500Hz refresh rate without BFI. For MPRT to be effective, you must set your in-game frame output at between 120 FPS and 250 FPS, effectively simulating 240Hz and 500Hz motion clarity, but at half brightness. Beyond that, you'll simply darken the image without gaining any improvement in motion clarity. All in all, it is one of the less intuitive black frame insertion implementations we have encountered. The MSI 272QP did not appear to perform proper 5.5 pulldown for 24fps video signal from external sources, leading to visible telescenic judder though it's not that obvious given the smaller screen size. In terms of connectivity, the MSI 272QP is equipped with two HDMI 2.1 ports with 48 gigabits per second of HDMI 2.1 and DSC bandwidth, one display port 1.4 with DSC as well as a USB-C port with 15 watt power delivery. Due to its native resolution of 2560x1440, if you wish to play console games on the Xbox Series X, you will need to change the HDMI 2.1 setting from the default PC mode to console mode, otherwise the monitor won't be recognized by the Xbox as a 4K capable display. With display HDR set to True Black 500, which from our testing offers the best balance, the MSI MAG 272QP hard clips at the panel's peak brightness, allowing us to set both maximum tone matte luminance and maximum full frame tone matte luminance to 600 nits in the HDR calibration app on the Xbox Series X. As a result, HDRG compliant titles are rendered with full impact, free from double tone mapping. Do note that the HDMI 2.1 setting applies globally rather than per input, so if you switch to console mode for HDMI, you will need to manually revert to PC mode when using DisplayPort for various reasons. And because the Sony PS5 only supports HDMI forum VRR, not AMD FreeSync or NVIDIA G-Sync, you will have to manually enable HDMI VRR on the monitor before variable refresh rate gameplay is available. VRR worked well to minimize tearing and frame drops for fluid gameplay, though minor flicker was still present in a few VRR games, especially on static menus. The MSI MAG 272QP X50 offers a supremely comprehensive suite of anti-screen burn measures for you to tweak to your liking, 
and although the pixel shifting cannot be fully disabled, there is some over-provisioning of pixels beyond the 2560x1440 QHD resolution, such that pixel shifting will never cause edges of the picture to be cropped off however slightly. On top of that, MSI backs the 272QPX50 with a 3-year warranty that includes coverage for OLED burn-in, bringing it in line with the industry standard for premium QD OLED gaming monitors. Like all QD OLED displays, the screen would turn grey when hit by direct light due to the absence of a polarizer, so careful positioning of the monitor is essential to prevent a noticeable loss of ambient contrast in a well-lit environment. Let's sum up. The MSI MAG 272QP X50 is a QD OLED monitor that delivers remarkable value for money. While the headline 500Hz refresh rate will undoubtedly attract attention, there is more to this display than sheer speed. A closer look reveals higher light output across the board, helping the monitor attain Display HDR True Black 500 certification. This not only enables more impactful HDR with slightly better preservation of highlight detail particularly in the most stable display HDR True Black 500 mode, but also improves usability in brighter viewing environments. Combine this with all the hallmark advantages of QD OLED technology such as deep blacks, vibrant colors, wide viewing angles, class leading screen uniformity, and the absence of near black chrominance overshoot artifacts, not to mention a street price of around £700 at the time of publication, the MSI MAG 272QPX50 QD OLED monitor earns our recommended Best Value Award. Of course, no display is perfect. The MSI 272QP lacks native 24P support and does not offer a gamma control in the picture menu, which would have been useful for fine-tuning image depth in a dark room. We would also like to see improvements in factory calibration especially in the SDR sRGB mode which fell short of the accuracy we observed on the MSI 272URX 27-inch 4K QD OLED monitor whose full review you can watch by clicking here.